Well, hey, everybody, we're just about ready for Starship Flight 8. I thought I would do a pre-flight discussion, kind of talk about the key milestones, the differences, and what we can expect for this mission. Starting off with the flight profile, it's very similar to what we have seen previously. The full stack launches, hot staging, booster catch, ship over to the Indian Ocean for a soft landing. Here is the timelines for the launch that we can expect. And this brings us down to T0. The flight director conducts the pull at one hour, 15 minutes to have the go for propellant loading. The ship, then the booster will have that uh, fuel and locks loaded in the sequence that you can see, 19 minutes, 40 seconds, the Raptor chill will commence. The ship and booster will be completely full with fuel at about the three minute point. 30 seconds is the go, no go. And then we'll have the launch. Here are some of the key timelines after liftoff, about one minute max Q, two minutes, 40 seconds, hot staging, about six minutes, 57 seconds, the super heavy booster should be caught, Set eight minutes and 44 seconds, Starship engine cutoff, 17 minutes, 24 seconds, the payload demo, that 37 minutes and 28 seconds, the Raptor in space relight demo, entry at 47 minutes into the atmosphere, and then landing about one hour and six minutes after takeoff. SpaceX has a number of key milestones for this flight, and here are most of them. I'm going to break this down into smaller chunks so that uh, we have a better idea of what to expect. Now, first off, this is the second generation or V2 of the ships. And of course, Ship 33 last time did not get a chance to fly its full profile. So Ship 34 will be doing that. And there are a number of key changes with this ship. One of the first and most obvious is the forward flaps have been moved more to the leeward side. They've been moved up higher onto the ship. And this is to not only change its aerodynamics, but also to help prevent them from having heat damage during re-entry. So this is a key test for this flight. Another key design change for the second generation of the ships is that they are about 1.8 meter taller or about one ring segment more than the previous generations. This allows for the redesign of the propulsion system, including 25% increase in propellant volume and vacuum jacketed feed lines and a new feed line system for the Raptor vacuum engines. And this image gives you an idea of what that looks like at the bottom half of the ship. And this possibly was related to some of the problems they had with ship 33 on flight seven. Some other noteworthy changes for the ship this time is an improved propulsion avionics module, and that's controlling the vehicle valves and reading sensors, and also for additional vehicle performance and the ability to fly longer missions. We also see that the ship's heat shield will have the latest generation of tiles and a backup layer for kind of ablative material to help prevent damage in case of loss or missing tiles. Among many more of the changes for the second generation ship includes the ability for more complex missions with propellant transfer, uh, return to launch site, avionics upgrade, communication systems, and better batteries. In addition to that, we're going to see a increase in the number of cameras. There are more than 30 cameras that have been added to all kinds of surfaces and interior volumes of the ship that we may see during the live stream. In addition to that, Starlink will be used again. This is what's been giving us the great views throughout the entire flight all the way down to touchdown. And I'm personally looking forward to seeing this during flight eight. This illustration gives us a great idea of what to expect during the flight profile from liftoff all the way to the splash landing in the Indian Ocean. Of course, at T0, we'll see all 33 engines lit. Those are done in a sequence of the inner 13, 15 of the outer engines, and then five of the remaining engines on the outer ring for a total of 33. Now that gives the Starship a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.5. So it will lift off from the launch site very quickly. And we start seeing that tower avoidance maneuver right away. Now the engines will gibble and the flight profile will proceed off to the east. 
and it will continue to gain altitude going through max Q at about the one minute, two second mark and proceeding all the way up to the hot staging. And that is where the ship and the booster will separate. You'll see all of those uh, white clouds coming off of the ship and booster just before you see the engines lit. That is a CO2 uh, injection into that area of the uh, boosters for the engines to prevent any kind of detonation. We'll see the flip and return of the booster. And right after the booster is uh, completed with its burn, the hot staging ring will separate and the booster will return back to the ground. Now, similar to the ship, the booster has had some avionics upgrades, more powerful flight computer, and improved power and network distribution and integrated smart batteries. In addition to that, Stage Zero has had some upgrades to the launch and catch tower to increase reliability of the booster catch, including more protections of sensors on the tower and also the chopsticks. Some of those were damaged on Flight 6 and Flight 7. They seem to work really well. Here's a couple of images showing you these sections of the tower where these upgrades have been made. After the problems that they experienced during Flight 6, several radar sensors were added and tested on Flight 7 of the chopsticks, and the goal is to increase the accuracy when measuring the distances between the chopsticks and the returning launch vehicle. Now, this seemed to work out really well for Flight 7. This is a great illustration of what this is like. Hopefully, it'll work out great for Flight 8. It's important to note that between the start and end of the boost back burn for the booster, the decision will be made based on a lot of criteria whether or not they can authorize the booster to come back. Hopefully, all of those criteria are met and we'll see the booster return to the launch site. I will say that the sonic booms are quite loud and startling. You'll also get a chance to see a vapor cone very much like this. And of course, if all goes well, the booster will return back to the chopsticks and we'll see something very similar to this with a safe catch and the booster hanging with the engines shut off. So hopefully we'll see this on flight eight. Now, of course, while the booster is being caught, the ship is continuing on its route of flight. Now, based on the last flight, the exclusion zones have been increased both in width and size, also duration, and extending well out into the Atlantic. This is a recent image of these exclusion zones and what it will look like for Flight 8. Now, if all goes well with the flight profile at about 17 minutes, 24 seconds, we'll see the payload demonstration. This is going to be deploying four simulated Starlink satellites about the same size and mass. They will continue on the suborbital route of flight and terminate with the ship through the atmosphere. This is what the deployment would look like. Following the payload demonstration at about 37 minutes, we'll see a single Raptor relight for a deorbit burn demonstration. And then about 47 minutes, we'll start seeing the ship come back through the atmosphere. Now, as part of the test, they are removing some of the tiles similar to what you are seeing on the screen here. This is part of a test in case they were to lose some of the tiles and they can gather some data. There will be an underlying ablative layer underneath the tiles and that'll be assessed. In addition to that they are trying different kinds of tiles different types of adhesive and they are using some of the tiles with a active cooling element like you see here there will be other experiments done during reentry as well. The ship's reentry profile is designed to intentionally stress the structural limits of the ship, also the new flaps and the heating for the heat tiles. I did discuss some of the aerodynamics and the principles involved in this video. I would recommend you take a look at this on my YouTube channel for more in-depth information. And during the actual re-entry over the tip of Africa and into the Indian Ocean, we'll start seeing the plasma develop and it looks something like this with multiple different colors. This will be changing as the ship gets deeper into the atmosphere. And then we'll get to max heating, which is the maximum thermal load on the heat shield. And then the ship will continue in towards its landing location in the Indian Ocean. Once the ship has passed through the hypersonic and supersonic regimes of the reentry profile, it will begin to reorient itself into the belly flop maneuver using those flaps that are on the exterior part of the ship. Now, this helps prepare the ship for its landing, also to help control its descent rate using the atmosphere to further slow the vehicle. 
At the appropriate time, which will seem very close to the surface at about one kilometer, we'll see the engines relight, flip the ship up into a vertical orientation and begin that landing process. And these images here from a couple of flights ago shows what we should be able to see during the actual landing in the Indian Ocean. It will be daylight there and they will have cameras on buoys and possibly drones. So hopefully we'll get some really good views of the actual landing in the Indian Ocean for Flight 8. So that's a quick recap of Flight 8 mission profile for Starship coming up very soon. Some of the key milestones and differences with the second generation of ship and what we can expect for the booster and the catching mechanisms. Now, this is a very important mission for SpaceX, and I'm hoping for 100% success. But as they would remind us, development testing by definition can be unpredictable. Getting the flight done and getting all of that data is the primary objective. Let's just hope that they have a good amount of success with both the booster and the ship. Thank you very much for listening along. I hope this was helpful and I'm looking forward to flight eight.